We have Stephen Cohen, Regional Sales Manager at Dot Digital. His successful philosophy enables brands to grow through a blend of knowledge and simplicity. Stephen's approach is to fully understand your business, customer base, and marketplace. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Stephen Cohen. Stephen Cohen. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Can everybody hear me okay? Perfect. I guess the more important question is, can anybody understand me? <laughs> uh, I heard a stat a few months ago, and when I heard it, I, I couldn't get my head around it. I couldn't believe it to be true. Um, the more I looked and researched into this stat, and I'm just trying to figure out how the clicker works. Hold on. Click. Okay. There we go. There we go. We're in. Look at that animation. Amazing. Yeah, I saw this stat a few months ago, and when I was researching it and looking into it, I couldn't get my head around it. I couldn't believe it to be true. And it was that in the 1970s and in the 1980s, the Coca-Cola marketing team had a KPI. They had a performance indicator, which basically said that they had to get their logo in front of every single customer in every single market around the world 65 times every day, <laughs> which is crazy. Um, and the more I looked at it and the more I thought about it, and I started counting for myself. Last week I was in New York, and between my apartment and our office, I counted 54 Coca-Cola logos. This morning on my way down here, I saw 14. There would have been more, but they had Pepsi at lunch. And if you think about it, everywhere you go, they have Coca-Cola logos on the side of buses, refrigerators, vending machines, umbrellas, plastic seats, every single corner of the world, there is a Coca-Cola logo. Now, you're probably thinking, this isn't relevant to me. They have a massive marketing budget. You know, we can't possibly compete with Coca-Cola. But in order to get that level of brand recognition and to get your brand and your messaging out there, there are some things you can do to start to compete with the big boys like Coca-Cola. And that comes down to marketing automation and being able to automate lots of your processes and take a lot of the heavy lifting and the strategy away from you. And we do that through three simple steps. The first one is by identifying all of the key touch points and the key engagements and interactions that you have with your customers on a day-to-day -day basis. The second one is by connecting those touch points together, how you bring it all together. And the third one is by implementing a strategy but most importantly, by testing, optimizing, and learning from that strategy continually throughout the whole process as you go through this process. Now, you're probably thinking, who am I? What have I got to do with any of this? So my name's Stephen. Um, I've worked at Dot .digital, or we were formerly known as Dot .mailer. A lot of people know us by that name for the last 10 years. This is my 10th year. Um, but additionally to that, I, I run a number of e-commerce websites, um, one on Magento, one on Shopify, and one I'm building right now in big commerce. I won't let you know which one is most successful, because I don't want to annoy anyone. <laughs> but they have very different results, I have to say. Um, so I've been implementing this strategy for years and years with clients all across the world. It's the fifth office, third country, and second continent I've now worked with Dot Digital with. So we'll start the process by looking at how you can start to implement key touch points. That is adorable. That's how authors actually swim. They hold each other's hands. So that's a touch point. We'll watch that a couple more times, just because I like it. And now we'll move it off the screen so I'm not distracted. So in order to work through identifying your touch points, there's a few things you can do. Your touch points essentially could be some massive things, like your website, a massive touch point. It could be very, very minor things, though, like the uniforms that your employees wear, wear the delivery truck that your goods are traveling to and from. There's lots of different interactions and touch points that you have with your customer base. And with each of those touch points, you can either form an opinion, you can modify an existing opinion, or you can reinforce what you already believe about your brand. And the key to understanding the touch points specific to your business is to get every single person in the business talking about those touch points. It's not just coming from you, because everyone looks at it in a slightly different way. So get the team together collaboratively and talk about all the interactions and all of those tiny touch points that your customers may have and find ways that you can improve them over time. A company that did this really well, called Chateau Milk from 
uh, Missouri, I believe they are. And they deliver milk and dairy produce all across America. So they got together as a team and they all started speaking about customer experience, about touch points, about processes and that kind of thing. Um, and the star of the show was one of their delivery drivers, John. <laughs> he said, um, every time I'm asked, what do I do for a living? What do I do for, for work? He told the same exact joke, like my dad, just the same repetitive jokes, but they work. And he told the CEO who'd never heard it before and he burst out laughing. And as a result, the CEO has now put his joke on the back of every single one of their milk trucks traveling around America. So I want you to imagine that you are traveling home tonight on the 405, as I probably will be, in traffic as per usual in Los Angeles, bumper to bumper, you're feeling pretty angry, but then you pull up as I get very angry behind trucks, but I pull up behind this particular one. And you see this, in case of an accident, please have cookies ready. Lots and lots and lots and lots of cookies. Now that adds a very simple piece of personality to what otherwise would have been a ridiculously boring touch point. If you think about other trucks and other cars that you see on the road, they just go by. But then the next time you're in a supermarket, imagine you saw that brand and it took you back emotionally to that moment where you were behind that truck on that rainy, boring day. And you probably buy their product over another one. And that's just a tiny, tiny, minor touch point. There's loads more. A quick show of hands. Has anyone seen the movie The Intern? There we go. A few. <laughs> I watched it at Christmas uh, last year with my, with my grandma. For those that haven't seen it, it's um, a fast-paced, dynamic e-commerce business run by Anne Hathaway. And they decide uh, to bring in an intern and they hire Robert De Niro. So he's very old school and there's a, a bit of a clash. I won't say any more. It's a great film. Everyone should watch it. But the thing that I learned from that movie is Anne Hathaway became her own customer. And I implore every one of you to do the same. We're all far too close to our own processes, our own businesses. So take a step back, become your own customer, go through your buying process and see if, or maybe ask family or friends, someone else, there might be something that you have not thought about before as part of that customer journey, the customer experience that could be a big change. And for Anne Hathaway in the movie, it was her packaging. And I was discussing this with a client last year, and they actually overhauled their packaging as a result. And it's this company here, Public Desire. Um, they are a fast-growing e-commerce brand selling kind of shoes, which everyone knows is a cutthroat business, very small margins. Um, so they started to build a community around it. So they implemented the hashtag PDB. I was kind of against that. I wanted to bay or not to bay. That is the question, but they didn't go for it. I'm not really a bay kind of guy myself. But they implemented this on the side of all of their boxes and all of their touch points, their post-purchase emails, their order confirmations, and it was consistent messaging across everything. In the last two years, they've grown their database to over one point, what is it now, 1.4 million and 60,000 posts using this hashtag. And these images on the screen, None of these are from their Instagram feed. These are all community-generated, user-generated content off the back of it because they've implemented that consistently across their touch points. The customers have got involved and they've created a community where people want to be part of this PDB. So it's just little things like that that we're able to do. So the key to this is keep asking yourself, what is the business problem we're trying to achieve? Get every single person in the team involved as part of that. Um, list, rank out all of your touch points as they do form, modify, or reinforce an opinion, and become your own customer. That's the most important point I can make on that particular one. So that's identifying those touch points. If we move into the next section, this is where we want to start connecting these touch points together. Um, and I call this area make time to save time. That's probably my favorite gif in the presentation. I like the way he claps his hand at the end and he just triumphantly falls into the, I'm assuming, freezing cold water. Um, one more time just for my benefit, and we'll move on away from distraction. Um, if you're like me when you come to these events, you want every single person back in the office to know that you're working really hard. And the absolute best way to do that is to take a photo of a graph or a stat and post it on social media. So as you've seen, I'm quite GIF friendly or GIF friendly. I still don't know how you say it. Um, so on this occasion, I have to let you know this is the only graph or data point or stat in the presentation. So get your phones ready for everyone back at work. 
Um, we work with loads of organizations all across the world, including some amazing data research people. And we work with a, a company called eConsultancy to do a lot of our, our market research. And they um, did a, a survey to about three or 4,000 e-commerce managers all across the world, and they asked them, what is the biggest barrier you have in order for you to do your job? And without fail, every single person or the majority of people, I should say, said time and resource comes up as the number one factor which is preventing them from doing their job, um, which is true. I think about my own job. I'm sure many of you are thinking about what you have in the day, and it's never enough time and never enough resource to do these things. And that's where the automation piece comes in. So my key tips around this, how to save time and make more time for yourself, is all around downstream automation. And this is where you have to take the things which are going to make the most money or have the biggest impact for your organization and start doing them first. So there's lots of different automations we could do. Things like the welcome series, the post-purchase series, the cart abandonment. Then you have more complex ones, follow-ups, replenishment, retention, loyalty. The whole life cycle could be mapped out and planned. Um, but if you identify the ones which are going to have the biggest impact and the most positive impact on your business, do them first, you'll get buy-in from the rest of the people in the organization, which will help you implement the more complex things across the journey, as you have momentum and buy-in. And a company that did this particularly well, um, we have to go back to my homeland of Scotland. So as I grew up, I went to this shop here, Slater's Menswear, with my dad. That's where he got his suits every, for his day-to-day kind of -day suits for work. And when we walked into that store, they'd all say, hi, Gary, and they'd welcome him at the door. And we'd go into a room and he'd get measured. And at the same time, I'd be getting measured next to him. And we would always get matching suits. I felt like mini me at the time, although I'm now taller than him. Um, and I loved that experience. And that's where I, for my whole life, I always got my suits, my shirts, and all my kind of men's wear from. But when I moved over to the US, they didn't have an online store. But they then launched it. So I thought, I got so excited, I bought it. Um, and when it came through, none of it fit it was the complete wrong size because I was missing that personal experience that I'd had in the offline world. And it's a really difficult thing to translate that offline experience into the online world. Um, so I called them up, made them one of our customers. We won't go through the details, but they became our customer. We talked through it in a lot more detail. And they basically told us that they had a massive conversion rate on that first purchase, but where they really, really struggled was with retention and second purchase. And I told them the secret, it was because none of your stuff fits when you buy it online because it's not made to measure in the same way. So what they did is they produced loads of content on the website, instructional videos, how to measure yourself, and in every single package that they send out, they now offer a measuring tape inside the box with a free return policy. So that was their biggest business problem. The thing that was stopping them from making money online was retention. But that could be something different for you guys and each and every one in the room. So think about the biggest challenge and start dealing with that after you did the things that make you money, basically. And that's what they did, and they did it really, really well. Um, so tackle the high impact first, the quick wins, then move on to your biggest challenge. Find the audience, understand the customer. These are just big things, big statements here. <laughs> Focus on loyalty, replenishment, and retention. They're the ones that are going to continue to make you money. But ultimately, and it's a, a kind of a phrase that we've used for years at Dot Digital, is always to think big, to start small, and to scale it up as quickly as you can. And the underlying point throughout this, and I've seen it from many presentations today, is the importance of reviewing, testing, and ultimately optimizing at every single stage through that buying process. And that moves you on really nicely once you've seen how those touch points can be identified and how they connect together, is how we can actually then go in to implement them. I had no idea this is how they make it happen. I would have assumed it was like CGI or some kind of graphic, but no. These guys, I, probably, I will spend my flight home, I guess, going through the credits on the Superman film and try and find out the name of these two people just so I can give them credit in the next time I use this, this GIF. I'm turning this off again, I'm being distracted. Um, <laughs> but you get the, the idea in there. Um, when it comes to the actual implementation, you need to make it as easy as possible for the customers to get involved. 
Uh, we spend a lot, a lot of time with customers implementing things like preference centers or really long and complex forms. But ultimately, people will not fill them out. It takes too much time. I know myself, I'm always on my phone. If I'm not able to pre-populate a form, it doesn't autofill, I'm unlikely to do it. So make it as easy for people to get onto your list, to get into these automations, and to get into these, these things. We found this worked really well after lots and lots and lots of testing was with Barber. So we streamlined where they had a email capture sign up. They then triggered an email where we sent an email where they then asked loads of questions. People did fill it out, but not many. And the people that did fill it out spent the most money, were the most loyal and stayed with them for the longest. So it's always important to do, but the crucial pieces of information that they need for that first email communication, that first trigger that they're sending out was around gender, because then they can start to specify the products which are most relevant to the recipient that's receiving. So can you add some of these steps in at the very, very beginning of these forms? And it just streamlines and makes the whole thing much, much easier to do. Um, the other piece that you're able to do, and something we're seeing is coming up more and more, is the ability to update preferences or update data held against an individual based on their engagement inside emails or touchpoint communications themselves. So very simple, simple example, you might have a, say an English, a Spanish and a French flag inside your email. But based on that click, you would be able to update their language preference in future communications. But that streamlines the form. Therefore, they don't necessarily need to fill out that element within the initial form. So it streamlines it, makes it extremely easy to do. Another example where we saw this work very, very well was with Microscooters, um, big Magento site. And they have a whole community going on where people want to get involved, but they had extremely poor deliverability rates on certain ISPs. It's a question we're asked all the time. How can I increase my deliverability? How is the deliverability, etc.? So here's an interesting fact for you. We had Google in at the offices, and they were telling us on Gmail specifically, there are 14,000 different engagement metrics that they look at before they determine whether you go into the inbox or not. And they asked us to guess, and there's all sorts of ridiculous guesses, but the number one thing that they are looking for is a legitimate reply or a legitimate response to an email. Not an autoresponder, but someone taking the time to reply. So in your messaging and in your communication, a little tip is to open that up as a two-way communication channel where you can get data coming back in and it will also therefore increase your future inbox placement and deliverability. So for micro scooters, we designed a campaign, which was two ways, where we said in 100 words or less, reply to this email and tell us why you love your scooter. And at the same time, we set up a hashtag on social media where they had to post using the hashtag to enter a competition to then win a whole bunch of their products and goods. So they're increasing engagement, they're getting multiple touch points covered, increasing social engagement, and improving their inbox deliverability all at the same time. So implementation can be easy but you need to understand your touch points, your journeys, what's going to make you the most money and what's going to be the quickest wins. Ultimately, what is your biggest business challenge? And you need to keep asking yourself throughout. But the real key to absolutely everything is at the end of the day to maintain an ethos within your organization and of the importance of testing. <laughs> it's ridiculous, I know. I'm sorry. I didn't know how that would fall, but I liked it. Better than him, at least. There we go. And that's what I got for you today. Thanks, guys.